Peter Gray, give me a hug. It's been a while. I, we, I've been talking to you on the phone for the last few weeks, and you were in London and there. So I finally get to uh, see you backstage. How's it going? Well, hopefully we're slowing down the travel until Friday anyway, and then we head off to Europe for some more hijinks. You've got the shows in Europe? Yeah. All right. So um, how many shows you got in New York? Um, doing three this season, but we're shooting every day. So yesterday, for example, we did like a, a show, show in the morning, first thing, 6 a.m., got it, got you, banged out the show, um, finished at about 11, 11.30, then ran, did a shoot, and we were shooting like a Maybelline thing for Marie Claire UK. So it was really, excite, really exciting. We had Erin Wasson out, and we had a really good shoot yesterday afternoon. Finished at about 7.30 last night, got home, yeah. started doing a little bit more prep, finished you know kind of culminated the idea for this morning Away you go. So, I gotta, I, so I've been getting a lot of phone calls because they know we're such good friends and yeah. I'm getting all these people hassling me how to get on Peter Gray's team so all these people here how do they get on Peter Gray's team other than call me and harass me and then I harass you other than that path so don't Everybody start calling me. How do you get on a Peter Gray team? I thought that, I thought team? that was the route. That was the route. <laughs> I thought that was the route. No more. <laughs> I think you know, like anything, it's uh, it's like anything. It's trusted recommendation. You know, you want people who you know are going to be cool backstage. You know, are going to leave their ego at home. Are going to come with some skills or come with a desire to learn, and understand that this is about the designer, not just about the hair. Um, you know, designers have been working five to six months on a collection. We come in at the last minute, and we, we're the gilding. You know, we're the, the icing and the cherry on the cake if we're lucky. And what you've got to do is try and fit into their vision. It's not always just about the hair. So you're looking for a twist on the hair. You're looking for an angle. They often come to you with something. You know, they all just want the simplest. They just, right. At that stage, they just want to get hair and makeup out the way. Most of the you know, designers have just had enough by the time it comes to hair and makeup tests. But this is at the top level. So a kid who's maybe in not a big city and yep. they've started hairdressing, and they want to get into the fashion world back here, they can't call Guido. They, they don't know how to, you know, they can't just call you. So how, what are the steps to get onto these teams? What do, you, how, what, what do they do? I mean, I think basic skills always the thing that's going to get you through. I mean, mannequin, I always say mannequin head, mannequin head, mannequin head. Get your mannequin head, stand in front of the TV and get good at doing all the basics. Get your ponies down, get your chignons down, get your products down, understand what creates a matte texture, understand what creates shine. Try and emulate the images you see from Fashion Week. Try and work out how things are done yourself. So that by the time you approach an agency and you say, look, I'd like to work, you mean, we, generally people approach our agencies or people we know or people on the team and they want to be brought on. But it's not so much being brought on, it's being kept on. That's the key. So, and if you come with a modicum of skill and if you come, you know, knowing not just, because Keen's not really enough. You know, you need to be able to do whatever needs doing with the little twists. So. so obviously he's not going to give up his phone phone number because I was waiting for him to give up his cell phone. So that's not going to happen. I'll tell you what we can do is you really want to tie into agents. Ring, agents research. Agents. There's easy ways to find out all the editorials. Look at who's who the agents are. Ring them. Send your portfolio. Come with some skills. And get on an aeroplane. Come to New York. And then just pound the pavement, right? And, and listen, you know, we've got people from here from, you know, we've got a girl who's... An artistic director for one of the really big product companies. She's come and joined us, uh, joined us for the entire week, ten days. She's probably been here herself. She's paid for herself to be here. And when people are prepared to commit like that, we open the doors. And then it's like they get to see everything. They come to the tests. They come, you know, to all the backgrounds on the shows. They come backstage with us. They come to all our extra shoots and things like that. Yeah. Um, and I and I think on that too. One thing is the industry is lucky to have you because. You make people feel comfortable. If they can't do it, you don't throw them under the bus. You let them do enough to feel good and then hand it over to someone who can finish the job. And I think it's finding a team that is going to be supportive, allow you to sort of evolve your skill set because, you know, you're a luxury, but some of this, it, it can be stressful backstage if you're new at this, right? Totally. I mean, I think that's why I say come with some basic skills so that, you know, you're not totally intimidated. You know, when someone says do a ponytail, you know how to bang out a ponytail. You've looked at enough YouTube videos. You've kind of seen the basics. Um, you can do a basic chignon. You understand the difference between a chignon and a pleat. Um, once you have those basic skills, if getting the, the break backstage is not that difficult if you approach the agencies. There's a lot of people, and I will say tenacity is the key. If you get turned down the first time, be prepared to get turned down ten times, but keep on coming back. It's the people who keep on coming back and keep on with the enthusiasm. 
and come back better and better. And some people, you know, some of the guys come from Australia, they come from all over the place, and they're super keen and they're super committed and dedicated. So I just noticed your first model, so I'm going to let you go in one sec. But just to so recap, is that just as much as it's great for the artists, people like yourself and myself, we need great team members. So it's a, it's a win win for both. So reach out to the agents, get your skills set up, and then understand fashion, understand the Peter Grades of the world, what they're doing editorially, who's doing the big shows, and start small. And when you do get to New York or Paris Milan, don't expect it for it to happen overnight. If you get to go on one show and hand pins, walk away satisfied and all build it incrementally. All so. word of mouth. Everybody recommends everybody. You generally find everybody on the teams recommended each other at some stage, and they all pull each other in on different teams, and all of the hairdressers at a certain level are all connected and our teams all cross-pollinate almost. Absolutely. So I'm going to leave you. So Maggie's favourite hairdresser, Peter Gray. I think I'm number two. I'm going to claim number two. Uh, Have Roger, a great Roger show. my favourite hairdresser. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks.